Hey, what's up, guys? Arava here, and welcome back to another episode of my F122 My Team Career Mode. This is episode number 62 today for the British Grand Prix in season four. If you guys did miss the previous one at the Austrian Grand Prix, then be sure to go check that one out before you see this one, because that was a very fiery episode, to say the least, including for the first time, I think, ever, some rear um, some major rear wing damage, and it was all stemming from an incident with our own teammate and Audi Civil War broke out a little bit around the Red Bull ring. Carlos Sainz hit the back of us in the sprint race, broke our rear wing and gave us some major damage. And although I did move a little bit in the brakes and I still maintain there was no need for him to accelerate as he did and slam right into the back of us. And if that wasn't enough, of course, later on in the main Grand Prix, uh, Sainz went out of his way to hold me up and we lost out on the three second gap lead that we had built in the lead of that Grand Prix. In the end of it, it didn't matter in the end because everything was piling on on top of me, I guess, that weekend because we went on to have an engine failure. So in the end, Science got the last laugh of actually outscoring me in that race and we had to suffer our first ever engine failure of the season around there. But of course it had to happen happen in the same episode where we had come to blows with our teammate and everything was already a bit of a pressure cooker that certainly added to it. It was, it was a shame because the car was so quick and I was so 100% convinced I was going to win that race. Our engine is insane now. We've got the most powerful engine on the grid thanks to the upgrades and the work from Audi and going into our home race today we now have the best car on the grid completely. We're just ahead of Red Bull. It is going to be still pretty damn tight, I'm sure, with all the drivers firing on all cylinders. But it's nice to have that confidence of having the best car on the grid. But of course, for me, I'm driving with a bit of, you know, with a bit between my teeth, basically, going into this episode. Because I have so many things to try and bounce back from. I have the issues with Sainz. And who knows how that's going to continue now into this one. It is my home race. So I want to do well. But I'm sure for from what we've seen from Sainz in the last few episodes, he is going to be there trying to spoil my party. And then, of course, I want to prove that we can win a race now with this car and actually win it with some conviction for the first time, really, uh, ever since we started this series and the game launched. I reckon if the cards align properly, we're going to clean get away, we get moves done and we could break away at a DRS. I think there are some opportunities in this season to actually have some very, well, I guess more mundane races where I can actually maybe dominate the race because the car felt that quick around Austria. Of course, going to have to see how in the next couple of episodes if we can maintain where we are in the R&D chart because I'm sure now the AI are going to start to slowly catch up with us, start to out-upgrade us because of their boosted R&D and our reduced R&D. And you're seeing that with Haas. Haas's rate of development has been the best of all of this entire grid. It's been a bit scary in a way. So we'll, we'll see how it goes. But that's why I'm desperate to make the most of it. We need to make the most of uh, our car at this stage when it is the best because it's not guaranteed to be the best all the way through the season, which makes how the end of last episode ended even more frustrating because I was already angry angry and fuming in the cockpit of how things were going and what had happened with science and then obviously it's no one's fault the engine just gave away it's a mechanical issue that is a a randomly you know thing you know that you can't change you know restarting that race you know you'll know if you played the game if you get mechanical failure you can restart that race as many times as you want you're always going to get that mechanical failure because it is predetermined for you before the race weekend you don't know it's going to happen until it happens the first time but then from then on you know that the game's coding has decided that today you're having an engine failure you can't really there's no telltale sign i had a fresh engine in the back of that car i had swapped in fresh components into that car so uh yeah just a bit odd and for those uh, that were commenting about you know potentially me modding that in it's not a mod guys it, you, you should know how the game works now an engine failure like that when there's literally a radio call about it beforehand that is literally coded into the game that's something obviously years ago we've been asking for and you know as much as it frustrated me it, it's you know it's fair game that's what happens in formula one it's a cruel sport and it was cruel to me last weekend. Against all odds, I thought I was going to fight back and get this amazing victory. 
and alas, it was scratched away from us. I'm still fully backing this team with the partnership with Audi. We've got a great engine and we've got reliability upgrades on the car as of late. We've got more coming, in fact, right now, uh, you know, into the into this weekend, into the next one. So, you know, I'm trying my best to make it as reliable as possible, but unfortunately, Lady Luck was just not on my side. But this is a new race weekend and a new opportunity. So full focus now on Silverstone. We've made it through into the top 10 shootout, along with signs, the two McLarens, Red Bulls, one Mercedes, both both Haas and one Renault of Verstappen. Bit of a shame not to see either of the Audi Sport Works cars make it through because you may have noticed on the R&D shot, them and Ferrari did bring some significant upgrades this way, uh, race weekend. So I was kind of maybe thinking maybe we might see them kind of back into the foray of the top 10. It seems like such a long time ago now where Sebastian Vettel got, got that brilliant race win in the opening round, such as the kind of deficit they've uh, seen in the, uh, in the race has gone by since then but that's just how the cookie crumbles if you don't go forwards in formula one you are going to go backwards in terms of the pecking order speaking of going forwards we're looking to try and make our way up from p8 at the moment that first flying lap was on a scrub set of soft tires so this is a brand new set of soft tires my last set in this top 10 shootout and here we are on that final flying lap at the moment I believe it's one of the Red Bull cars on provisional pole position science is up there which spurred me on even more to try and get up there maybe even get a pole position at the home race across the line it's not quite pole it's such a close margin it's the front row though alongside Albon in the Red Bull and crucially ahead of science I'm more happy about that than than really getting on the front row to be honest ahead of also Obviously, our, uh, our rivals of uh, you know our rivals of McLaren with Lando Norris and Gasly as he won last race. So could he be getting into this championship fight maybe late on with a second half spurge? Who knows? He looked very good around Austria, to be fair, and especially after I retired. Clearly, went on to go overtake both Lando and Drogovic. Bit of a shame for Repsol Haas to not be a bit further up, but you can see things are very tight in qualifying. So and also just potentially the circuit doesn't suit their car as much as it did Austria uh, and and the race that had preceded did it as well so interesting times there in terms of that close fight behind us but for us happy that we have our qualified our teammate after all the drama of last weekend and also on the front row for our home race that's what you want now let's try and get the jump on Albon hopefully on the opening lap and we can maybe go on to do some great things in our home race let's go to the grid welcome along then to Great Britain and the great Silverstone circuit for today's Grand Prix The 3.6 miles of Silverstone Circuit in Great Britain is hallowed ground to the Formula One faithful. We have 18 corners that wrap around this former World War II airbase and some good passing opportunities at the end of the DRS zones. Before we begin, let's take a quick look at the grid lineup for today's race. What a great lap from Alexander Albon yesterday. He'll start from pole position and the owner driver alongside. Considering the rest of the grid, we have Sainz, Gasly, Lando Norris, and Sonoda, Schwartzman, Verstappen, Drogovic, and George Russell, Fernando Alonso, Bottas, Sergio Perez, and Oscar Piastri, Vettel, Liam Lawson, Mick Schumacher, and Charles Leclerc, Theo Porcher, Magnussen, Ocon, and Lance Stroll brings the grid to a close. With preparations almost complete, let's head down to the track. Anthony Davidson joins me once again in the commentary box, and it's fantastic to have you with us here, but I'm curious, as a man with experience out on the track, how do you stop those pre-race nerves from becoming overwhelming when you're lining up on the grid? Well, I imagine they'll be starting to feel the adrenaline as they anticipate the rundown into Turn 1, a bit like preparing to go into battle. The unknown situation will bring nerves, but that's a good thing. It will keep them focused on the moment and on their surroundings as we build towards the start of the Grand Prix. We really needed that strong final qualifying lap. Um, you know, thinking about it more now, as we are now here on Sunday, getting ready for the race, it was needed, especially with Sainz being there from P3. It was very important to get ahead of him. But also for our championship, 
you know, after facing an engine failure and dropping uh, a few points to Albon and Norris, we needed to be here at the sharp end to give us the best chance of maybe jumping Albon the early stage and uh, and going for that race win. It's going to be tough, though. He's on soft tyres, as is Gasly and a couple of others. So they're going for a bit of a different strategy, maybe soft to medium. I'm going medium Well, my engineer says hards, but if they're going softs, maybe we go just the opposite and go mediums to softs and end the race on the quickest tyre. But there's also potentially some rain on the way at the end of the race. So this could be a very interesting one by the end of it. But first things first, in this opening lap, I'll just try my best to get the jump over Albon. And we made a statement of intent by parking our car very aggressively towards that Red Bull, the P1 spot, as we go to five red lights to the British Grand Prix. Lights out, and away we go at Silverstone. And it's not as much of a good getaway uh, for Albon as I thought it would be into turn one with a bit of a ERS usage. We're right up his gearbox, and he's leaving. Even the door open to the inside of Village. We've gone down the inside so close to making a bit of contact with his floor and the sideboard area. He hops the curb and that opens the door fully and then we slam it shut as we go up into P1 of the home race. But there goes Carlos Sainz down the inside as they enter through the next left hander into Luffield. Sainz getting very aggressive on the entry and he snatches P2 away from Albon. So despite being on the quicker tyre, Albon's not made the most of it. Now it's a 1-2 for Martini, Audi, AAR. But now Sainz comes at us for P1. This is the worst case scenario the pit wall were hoping for. Off the back of Austria, Sainz into the lead now. We're side by side into Magnus Beckett, making contact. We're battling for the race lead and clearly the feelings are still raw for the back of the Austrian Grand Prix because Sainz was driving the wheels off that car. I've not seen an AI team out of mine be this aggressive and direct with his overtaking and moves as Schwarzman now tries to make it through wide the reps or has up into p3 potentially as we do maintain the lead though going to these final corners crucially in that battle but science Sainz has hit us again. He's come out of nowhere and he's just smashed into our front left tyre. He's into the lead of the race now, but with a broken front wing and we're down to P6 having to cut across the grass. I don't think we have damage though. I'm going to ask my engineer and he confirms to me there's no vehicle damage. So I've, I've had a bloody miracle. I don't know how on earth I've come out of that heavy impact with no damage whatsoever. You can see it there on the heads-up display. And to be honest, from my perspective, that's just a bit of karma, really, that I've come out unscathed and I'm still able to maybe make some moves to catch back up to, well, the race leader, who's now Albon, because Science is struggling without a front wing. Gasly's overtaken him just then. So it's now Albon from Gasly, the two soft tyre runners, and myself and Schwartzman are stuck behind Science with no front wing. We need to overtake these two cars because uh, otherwise, the the soft tire runner is going to run away with this. We dive down the inside of Schwartzman and then just nip past Sainz. Look behind us and just see him with no front wing. Uh, and that whole time I'm looking behind him, just pondering, what on earth were you thinking, man? What was the thinking going into that uh, left-hander? Um, we got back into first. All was well. I was about to take that left turn. You know, hit the apex pretty damn nailed on. And all of a sudden, this flash of Martini White comes at me from the mirrors. And the left-hand side, he didn't even try and make the corner. He just directly went for a direct hit on my front left tyre. It was just insane. As now we see Lando Norris maybe struggling a bit for some reason. Side by side with the Renault. As now Theo Porcher is out. And uh, him going out of the race is going to go from a virtual safety car to a full safety car. So, a safety car is out, uh, not, not for anything to do with myself or science then, surprisingly. In the end, it's Theo Porcher, and we'll see a replay of that uh, at some point. But first of all, we're going to take you through the replays of that lap one incident there. So, we're in P1. This is on board from Carlos Sainz, and uh, I'm just speechless. I'm actually speechless. I don't know what has got into him. But this is the most aggressive and aggy an AI teammate has ever been towards me on any F1 game I can remember. This is insanity. That was just a direct strike 
at my front left tight. Like, there is no way he's ever making that corner. He's not even really trying to because he's directly aimed it towards my front left tyre. If I wasn't so lucky in that situation, that could have been my front left tyre cleanly shaven off. That could have been race over on lap one. And it very much was race over for Theo Porcher on lap two in the Aston Martin. Big collision with the Ferrari and then comes across the grass and uh, makes contact further still with the same Ferrari that I think caused the incident in the first place. Catches out Sergio Perez and Liam Lawson in the Andretti Honda as well. And that's why the safety car's out. And then, uh, well, well, this is under the safety car replay of Sainz, who had already come in as Porcher was crashing for a front wing change onto hard tyres. Ironically, he's now got a free pit stop under that safety car. The rest of us, it's not worth coming in yet. It's far too early with the tyre wear around here at Silverstone. So, uh, who knows where Sainz will eventually be in this race. I'm hoping we are nowhere near him because I can't be held responsible for what I will end up doing if we catch him at any point around this circuit. Um, because, yeah, I was absolutely just gobsmacked at what had just happened. But now we're on the restart. We've got two soft tyre runners ahead of me. And the game plan was to try and stick with them until their soft tyres start to wear out and try and make a move. Speaking about making moves, Felipe Drogovic makes a move on the soft tyre runner, Fernando Alonso, and gets up into P9. Drogovic didn't have the best qualifying on Saturday, but trying to make some moves and climb up the order. His teammate doing very well in P5. Clear that the Haas car maybe isn't as good around Silverstone as it was around Austria, but still pretty damn competitive to where it were at the start of the season you must say. But now the laps have gone by in this opening stint. Gasly looking to make a move for the lead of the race versus Albon and the whole time we've just been looking after this set of medium tyres ready to pounce unfortunately I won't get that chance because they both come in then to my surprise on that same lap that Gasly went for a move. You know that was the only attempt Gasly made that entire first stint and as soon as he made the attempt they both decided to come in so uh, yeah you guys know how much I love to get stuck with on track action rather than just overtaking people on strategy but that was literally the, the definition of it my medium tires are fully fine right now and I just protected them to the point where those two were clearly wearing them out they decided to come in early maybe and I scared them by keeping up with them and so now we have clean air just to do our own race basically and try and basically look after the tyres whilst also putting in some good lap times. Meanwhile behind, fighting between Lando Norris and Schwartzman and then Drogovic and Verstappen. Uh, the Brazilian trying to get up into P5. Verstappen fighting that quite hard though. Renault with some upgrades in the last race or two I believe as well as them and Audi uh, Sport tried to make their way up and back into some comfortable points in recent races. Drogovic though not giving up this fight. Watching his teammate up the road fighting for P2 must be some sort of motivation especially because remember Drogovic uh, also faced an engine failure uh, last race like me so both of us have something to prove of coming back into this race and trying to make up for what potentially could have been a lost win for either of us. But Verstappen trying to use all his skill in this Renault to try and annoy the hell out of him and stay ahead and into Luffield just gets ahead and will frustrate him to the point where Vettel and Russell are closing up to those two now so it might become a four-way fight and then behind them there is where science is in all of this on the hard tyres already having made his pit stop in this race so it might be worth keeping an eye on him because as now we enter lap 13 we go on for another lap on these mediums doing very well to control a four plus second lead to Norris he's in Bottas is in as well as Drogovic the Renault the Mercedes of Russell and that's going to invite Sainz a lot of free positions as they all make their first pit stops and he's going to come through the final few corners and very annoyingly much to my dismay he's going to climb all the way back up to P2 after all of that after what he caused on lap one with us he somehow ended up in a great position in second place with the hard tyre already on his car. And you can see the gap is about 16.4 seconds, 16.13, fluctuating a little bit. That's well within the window of a pit stop. So as it stands, when I pit, Sainz may actually just get the lead of the race. Which is just unbelievable. Like, I know he had a free pit stop, so it makes logical sense. But in terms of 
if it's fair or not for the race to end up like that. That is just unreal. That is just, and that's going to be worse for him. Because that means I'm going to be chasing him down from second place. With a burning anger inside the cockpit, knowing that I should be up there in first place. But what might change the game is this. It's lap 18, and I've still not come in from my pit stop. Science has reduced the gap to 11.7 seconds now. You may be wondering, what on earth am I doing? I'm just letting him catch up to me. But you can clearly see it's overcast, and on cue, it's now starting to rain. That rain is arriving here. And I reckon I could go straight from mediums to the intermediate tyres if the rain starts to fall down enough. Lap 19 onto 20. We're still going. The gap has come down even more. 9.1. But it won't matter if both of us are coming in straight onto intermediate. So I'm just completely cutting out that second dry tyre stint. Meanwhile, behind Sainz, Leclerc is in third. Gasly's got ahead of Albon in all of this. Then you've got Sonoda, Perez, uh, Lando Norris, who's fighting still with Robert Schwartzman quite, uh, quite aggressively there. Bottas and Drogovic fighting for that last point Spain position. But now, for me, on lap 20, the rain is really coming down, and the FIA are going to disable DRS, which is the indicator. It's time to come in for Inters. So this might just work. Seven seconds. Seconds to science. We'll both come in now on this lap for intermediates. And there we go. We're still going to be in the lead of this race. Oh, well, maybe not. Because now another curveball's been thrown into it. Oh, the front right tyre's got a puncher. We push these medium tyres right to the limit. And just half a lap out from my master 300 IQ plan from working without a hitch. But now we're doing our best Lewis Hamilton impression from 2020. Three wheels around Silverstone and Sainz is closing up at a rate of knots and Sainz passes us for the lead before we even make that intermediate pit stop. One lap earlier, if the rain came down one lap earlier, or if I risked it by going on to Inters one lap early than I thought was maybe necessary, this would have been fine, but now this puncher has brought us down to P2. We won't lose any more positions, thankfully, and it's only going to be, you know, a couple of seconds we've lost to Sainz in all of this. If I had pit onto soft tyres, I would have been in this situation anyway, so in my mind, it, it was still worth the risk, and oh. One lap earlier, if I pit on lap 19, I would have been an absolute driving genius in terms of the strategy plays there. But it happens, you take the risk and sometimes it could go the other way. Um, we're still going to be there within some sort of attacking range from Sainz because Sainz actually hasn't come in. Hang on, he hasn't, he hasn't come in, has he? No, he hasn't. He's not there. He's not made a pit stop. Oh, that's a huge error from him. Surely it's time for Inters. Oh, okay, this might just be fine. This might be fine. Signs comes out, finally, on the next lap. Oh, and he comes out ahead of us. He comes out ahead of, ahead of us. But because he didn't come in on lap 20, he stayed out for one more lap on the damp track. The gap is only 2.7. That is catchable. For whatever reason, Sonoda is still out there on the medium combine attire. But there is Sainz then, 2.7, 2.8 seconds ahead of us. That is doable in four laps. With the pace we showed in this car around this race on those worn mediums, that is possible for sure. Behind us, Leclerc, Albon, who's got ahead of uh, Gasly now again in the pit stops. Norris way ahead of Schwartzman, who's been pushed down to P10, so a bit of operational uh, fatigue from Reps or Hass it looks like, as both Schwartzman and Drogovic are further down the order than they were, so showing some signs that they still have a bit to learn, I guess, in terms of how to play these races, and uh, for Albon, that's good news for him to gain more points over uh, myself and Lando by overtaking Gasly in the pit stop. And looks like there's a fight brewing between Valtteri Bottas and Sergio Perez as the Audi wants to get past the Renault. You've got the Haas in there just behind as well. Bottas pulls out to the left-hand side. Perez goes defensive into Stowe. Bottas the long way around. Perez gets the elbow out. It's some great racing there and it still might keep going because Bottas dies round the outside then through the left into the right. This is some great wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing in very tricky changeable conditions as the rain continues to fall and get more and more and now Schwartzman might join the party. He's right up 
the gearbox from both those cars and Bottas up into P7. Schwartzman now might dive down the inside of Village and he's having a bit of a breakout race. He's been in the, in the shadow, you've got to admit, of Felipe Drogovic this entire time ever since they really started to get good. But Schwartzman having a really cracking race and trying his best to get some more points for Reps or Haas. No DRS, of course, now in these conditions, but down this straight under the bridge, it's going to be Schwartzman on the inside. Perez with the front end twitching as they try and find some grip on the braking. And Schwartzman's going to have to try and dance this car right round the outside in front of the adoring crowd of the field. It might be a fantastic overtake and the battle just continues on but we don't have time for that because we're going back to our POV and we're now 1.5 seconds behind Sainz. I want this win. Okay, stand by. We see a problem no, don't you dare. No, Mark. Mark, don't you dare. Please just tell me that it's going to be a fuel issue, an ERS issue. I can handle that, okay? Because we're so close. We're now just over a second away from Sainz with three laps to go in this one. And I'm not letting the man who tried to take me out on lap one somehow come through for the win of this race. Three laps to go. We're chasing him down. And the engine's given out again. You can't. Yeah, no, I can't believe it. I can't believe it. Back to back engine failures. Back to back. Ah! Oh. You can't write this stuff. You can't actually. Write. This is unbelievable. Unbelievable. I can't actually. I can't actually believe that's happened. Two back to back failures. Whilst we've been actively bringing new reliability upgrades, and in this race. With everything that just happened. Come on. Come. The F1 universe. The, this season. They don't want me winning. They don't want me winning and getting justice, do they? Absolutely not. Bullshit. Plenty of action here at Silverstone. A memorable race and an impressive victory. And talk to me. What do you think it was that sealed the win for them? It's a heroic effort for any driver to race in conditions like these, and seeing them fight their way to the front was very special indeed. They were able to find all the grip, all the good lines, and had the confidence to get on the power to top it all off. That's what pushed them into first place here today. The faces on our top three look so incredibly happy as they make their way up to the podium. A much-deserved victory and a brilliant performance from them all. Look at him, this smug bastard. Winning my home race, having tried to take me out, failed to do so, and then got very lucky with the, the safety car coming out on the very next lap. And uh, the rain as well, just coming one lap a bit too late. It wouldn't have mattered in the end, actually. Even if I, now, looking back at it, it would not have mattered if I had actually not got the puncher and I'd come in the lap before and inters. Because I still would have had that engine failure. Because as I explained in quali to you guys, that is a fixed point in reality. You can't change that about the timeline. I would have always had this engine failure. And that's just even more gutting. Back-to-back -back engine failures. And in the backdrop of what is a molten cauldron of tension, heat, and just anger that is floating around in this team from clearly both sides of the way he's driven today earlier in that race and the way I have felt from the last to this race. I don't know where we go from here. There have been calls for me to drop signs, but... You know, we've got other partners in this team. Audi, they're going to be happy still with our car winning the race, probably. So where do we go from here? Where do we go from here? I don't know. But we've dropped more points in the championship to Albon and Norris. And are, are we ever are we ever going to get a driver's championship on this game? Could, we, could this be the first F1 game where I never get a driver's championship on any season? That might be a first for any YouTuber. Uh, with the F1 game. Uh, because uh, I'm starting to lose a bit of belief here now. Because, what? Well, <laughs> uh, unbelievable. Guys, if you have enjoyed the episode, then hit the like button. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. If you're on your hand here, then do get subscribed for weekly Formula 1 content. Next episode, I don't, I don't know what to, what to make of it.